Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com and today we're going to take a look at creating this little text overlay filter here in Adobe Illustrator. I swipe my finger like that because it was inspired by a Snapchat swipe over filter that I saw. We're going to jump in and mix it up and create this today. Now, if you do enjoy this tutorial, make sure you hit the subscribe button, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you never miss any future Illustrator or graphic design tutorials. And you can go back and check out all the other Illustrator and graphic design videos and tutorials on the channel as well. Let's jump into this tutorial and check it all out. All right, so here we are in Adobe Illustrator and I've created a document already. I'll just bump up to file new here to show you. It is a simple 2560 by 1440 sized document that is in pixels. I'm gonna hit close here because I already have a copy of this document open. I'm gonna head over and grab the text tool right off the bat and I'm gonna click a single time and I'm gonna type the word new and then hit enter return and type York for New York. And you can see the text is tiny way down there. We're gonna change the size here. You wanna go window and choose type and then choose character to open up the character panel, which I have open over here. And for this effect, big, bold, like chunky, uh, sci-fi type fonts I found work the best. So I'm gonna use a font called Dubtronic or Dubtronic or something like that, where is it here? Dubtronic Solid, it's a free font. I believe you can get it at Defont or Font Squirrel or you know, kind of any of those free font purveyors uh, online. We're gonna change the size of this font to 300 points. You can see much larger, now you can see New York, but you can do this with your city. I'm just choosing New York. I'm going to set the leading of the font here to 225 points. Let's try that again. Let's select that go 225. There we go. You can see it just pinches the letters together a bit more like that. Once we've created what we need from our live text, we're going to right click on that live text and choose this option right here, create outlines. So we're going to take the live text, convert it down to artwork. And next we're going to go effect stylize and we're going to choose this option right here rounded corners because we really want to make this even a little bit more bubbly looking than it is it's really cool the fact that it's all solid type but i want it to be a little bit more rounded and, and bulbous if you will i'm going to tick on preview and i think i'm going to bump the radius up to about 15 pixels now it all looks pretty good the only the stuff i'm kind of concerned about are there in the e maybe that'll be okay we'll be able to get away with that i think but this big wumpty woo here in the r Nah, that's a no-go. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to fix that and tweak that and adjust that. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Let's go ahead and hit OK to apply this rounded corners. Uh, and let's copy this text and then paste it in front. So we'll go uh, edit copy and then just choose edit paste in front. Edit paste in front pastes physically in front of the artwork we had, but also and more importantly, it just pastes it right in place. I'm gonna collapse my swatches panel here. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna hit this little arrow to just pop this layer open. And you can see, in fact, we have two copies of this text artwork group. Let's hit the little eyeball icon to shut off the top group. We'll select the bottom layer here by hitting that little circle, which is gonna allow us to select it. We're gonna double click here on our appearance panel. If you don't have that, you can always go window appearance. We're gonna pop that open and I wanna get rid of the rounded corners effect that we applied. So we're just getting rid of it here on this one copy of the text. We'll drag it to the trash and you can see we're back to having this sharp text. Next, I'm gonna right click on this and just choose to ungroup it so we can select any of these letters. And we can actually just delete all of the letters except the letter R. Remember the letter R is the one that we wanna mess with here. Uh, I'm gonna collapse my transparency panel here. I'm gonna drag my layers panel up a little bit just so we can see a little bit more of what's going on. I'm gonna turn on this group here. And what I wanna do is I wanna make this kind of editable artwork. I can shut off this compound path for a quick second just so we can see that damaged R. This is all to repair this R. We're gonna go object, we're gonna choose expand and appearance, that way we're kind of locking in those rounded corners, converting these to, you know, paths. And let's ungroup this group of artwork now. Right click, choose ungroup. You can see we have all these letters here in our layers panel. I'm only interested in the R right now, so it's this kind of funky R. So what we'll do is we'll turn our compound path of the other R back on, and we'll just drag a selection over both R's, just like that. Now we're going to open our Pathfinder panel, which I have right over here, but it's up here under Window, Pathfinder. And we're going to choose this icon right here to divide these two uh, these two shapes. And what it's going to do is it's going to chop them all up into a bunch of smaller shapes, any overlapping areas. And then we'll go object and we will ungroup this. So now we have all these individual pieces of artwork. If I collapse my appearance panel here and the pathfinder again, you'll have a better idea. See all these like sharp bits and pieces of the R. Let's uh, just zoom in on the R here and we'll just simply delete the bits we don't want. We want to get rid of the outside corners, right? Because we want uh, all of this R, we want this R to have all of 
these nice rounded corners, right? Where's that inside right that? Nah, actually, no, that's good. We do want the inside to be a little rounded. That's probably more how the R should work. So now let's drag a selection over this. We have all these different shapes that we're selecting. We're going to go back to the Pathfinder panel here, double click to open that up. And I'm going to choose this option here to merge all of these into one compound shape, just like that. So now our R is kind of nice and rounded, just like the rest of our letters. You just had to go in there and kind of mix things up to fix up our type and make it exactly how we want it to be. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, consider supporting this channel by picking up a copy of one of my Photoshop courses. There'll be a link up in the corner of the video. It's the little eye icon, or, or there's a link right down there in the bio. Boom, you can click it. Go check out the course. It's on Photoshop, I know, but it's the best way to support this channel. Uh, you can click that link, check it out. If you're interested, pick up a copy. This channel is supported entirely by viewers just like you. So if you pick up a copy, thank you so much. Let's get back to the Illustrator tutorial. So let's select this text by dragging a selection over it. We'll go object and choose to group this up. So now you can see all of our text is back in one group within our layer once more. I'm gonna duplicate this text, so I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go edit, copy, and then I'm gonna paste it in front. And I'm gonna paste it in front a second time. So I'll have three copies of this text all together. And then I'm gonna select and just hide that first group. So we're gonna hide that first group. We're gonna focus instead on these two bottom groups here. Let's drag a selection over this text. It's going to select both of those groups. As you can see here, they both have the blue squares next to the selection indicators in the layers panel there. We're going to change the fill. So up here in the color panel, right up there, when I switch to RGB mode, I have this option to punch in a hexadecimal code. I'm going to uh, take advantage of that right now. I'm going to go uh, something uh, blue. Let's go like 00A5E0. Zero, zero, uh, That'll probably be a nice light blue. And now let's just select the bottom most text group here by selecting the little circle in the layers panel. Hold down the shift key and let's nudge downward uh, one, two, and then nudge to the left one, two, just like that. And now what we want to do is go object, blend. We're going to choose blend options. I'm going to change the spacing from smooth color to specified steps. And I'm going to give it something just high. Maybe 150 steps will be fine. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to drag a selection over all of this text, right? Both sets of blue text and go object, blend, and choose to make the blend. And it's gonna just, you can see, create these, these cool like pseudo 3D looking shapes. Let's turn on our topmost layer again. You can see now it just looks like we have this black text on top of these somewhat 3D looking bases for our text. And we want to fill our top text with a gradient, but we wanna make the gradients uh, a very specific gradient. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create our colors for the gradient first and save them as swatches and drag them down into our gradient editor. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my swatches panel here, and actually I'll drag it out here just so we can really see what's going on. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna double click on my fill over here, I'm just gonna double click the fill, and I can punch in the hexadecimal code right here. So I'm gonna say for my first color, I want it to be like a kind of a flat reddish color, I'm gonna go FF1C, uh, like 53. You can see it's flat red, maybe a little more pink. I'm gonna hit OK, and then we can just drag our fill color and drop it in the swatches panel. There you go, we have our first swatch, Easy peasy. Let's double click on fill again. Uh, let's go with FFE 469. That should be a bit more of like a pale orange. We're going to drag that over to our swatches panel. Great. And then last but not least, we're going to go 8CE 2FF uh, for a bit of like a really light blue color. We're just going to drag that and drop it in our swatches panel as well. There we go. So we have those three colors that we just created. Those are going to be what we use in our gradient. Let's drag our swatches panel back over here. Let's collapse the pathfinder. Let's collapse character panel uh, just so we can give ourselves some space here. Uh, we're going to leave the swatches panel open because we're going to need to access those three colors. And let's open up our gradient panel here. So let's just click right here on this gradient if we, by selecting that little thumbnail. You can see it's going to fill our letters with that gradient. Let's change the angle of the gradient to like 90 degrees, but we're going to have a problem here because I want the gradient to go from top of the text all the way to the bottom of the text. I don't want it to just go from the top of each individual shape. You see how it's black at the top, white at the bottom? The gradient's reading across each shape individually. I don't want that. I want it to read it as one group. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Let's create our gradient for now. I actually want the angle here, by the way, to be negative 90. We want this, this white stop over here. That's got to be the top of our gradient. So we're going to drag the pink out and drop it on top of the white stop. And there we go. We replace the color on top with the pink. Let's drag our uh, yellowish stop out. 
I want this to be around like 40 to 45 percent, maybe like 42 and a half percent in terms of the location right down there. That's pretty good. And then we'll drag our light blue color out and drop it on top of the black to replace the black. And you can see what we're getting here in terms of our gradient. I'm going to grab this top color slider over and just try to smooth the gradient out a little bit. It still doesn't quite look how I want it to because I want this gradient to be constant over the whole bit of text. So how do I do that? Well, we use the gradient tool. Just grab the gradient tool, drag a gradient from the top, hold down shift straight down to the bottom, and there you go. We have our just red all the way up at the very top, and then all the way at the very bottom, we have our very light aqua blue. Very cool. We can deselect that, and now we have our gradient set on the very front of our text uh, uh, object here. Hey, if you're on Instagram, make sure you're following me. My Instagram handle is at tutvid. I post a lot of cool design-related stuff over there as well as all kinds of behind-the-scenes stuff. And you can always hit me uh, in the old Instagram DMs. It's one of the better ways to get a hold of me these days is right there through Instagram, at tutvid. So now we want to create a little highlight stroke effect in here. And we're going to do that. I'm going to collapse my gradient panel here because we don't need that at the moment. Also collapse my swatches because we don't need that. Let's just select this colorful front face of text here and copy it and paste it in place. So we'll go edit copy and then we'll just choose to edit paste in front and I'm going to get rid of the fill so we can just come over here to the bottom of our tools panel and hit the little slash icon to dump the fill. We're going to give it a stroke. We're going to give it a white stroke and I'm going to open up my stroke panel here. There we go. And all I need, well, you know, actually I'm going to double click to open this up a little bit bigger. We want this to be something like, let's go with like a five pixel stroke and I this is important here. I want it to have round caps and I also want to have rounded corners. That's going to just help us with what we're about to do with this uh, particular shape. Now we're going to come up here to object. We're going to choose path. We're going to choose to offset this path. I'm going to tick on preview here and I'm going to choose to offset the path. I don't want it to go outward like it's going. I want it to go inward. So I'm going to go like negative nine, negative 10. Uh, actually negative nine looks like it'll work just about perfectly. I'm going to hit okay. And before I do anything, I'm not even going to allow this to be deselected. I'm going to go edit and I'm just going to cut this path. All right, so now we've cut it or copied it to the clipboard, but cut it off of the artboard. Let's select the white outline that we created just a second ago and just delete it. So hit the delete or backspace key. And then that stroke that we just copied to our clipboard or cut to the clipboard, we're going to choose to paste that back in front. So now you can see we have just that outline that we've created. For a moment here, I'm going to collapse my stroke panel. And I'm going to collapse my color panel just to give me more room here on my layers panel. We can see we have all of these paths that look like they're totally empty, but it's just because it's the white stroke over a white preview background. The important thing here is I want to lock my blend and my text layers just so they don't move. So I can grab these bits of text and I can group them or save them or push them around and not worry about doing any damage to the artwork beneath it. Let's zoom in a little bit here and I want to begin creating the actual highlights. Now, the way I'm going to do this is with the scissors tool, which is located underneath the erase tool, scissors tool. And note the hotkey C. That's going to be helpful for us here in just a moment because we're going to be swapping between this and the direct selection tool. Let's focus here on the letter N. And I'm going to just snip the path right there. And I'll also snip the path like, like right there probably. Now, we'll grab the direct selection tool and just select the part of the, just part of the path over there. Hit delete once. Hit delete a second time. And you can see we get rid of everything except this little bit of our highlight. Hit the letter C to get back to the scissors tool and just like create a, cut a chunk of the path out like that and then select that middle section like that with the direct selection tool. I hit the letter A by the way. The letter A will get you to your direct selection tool. Select that chunk in the middle, delete it, and you sort of create this, you know, this broken away bit of the highlight just like that. So let's go C again to grab the scissors tool and let's create another sort of drop over here. So I'm going to delete the path and you may have to hit delete a second time. See there's like that straggler anchor point. If that's there and it's selected, just hit delete a second time and it will delete that. So there's sort of our highlight for the letter N. Uh, and then we can come over here to the letter C. Let's say we snip it here and we snip it here first and foremost because then we can just select and get rid of that whole chunk of the highlight. And then we can decide what parts we want to keep over here. So I'll probably cut that and then I'll mm, probably cut it like right there on that anchor point. So let's just select this chunk of the path and get rid of that. Cool. And let's hit the letter C again. Let's cut our path right there. And then we'll also cut it right there at that anchor point. So we can grab this bit of the path and delete that. Let's hit the letter C once more. And let's just snip the path right there. Bing, bing. And now we have those highlights. But then we would again use the scissor tool to come in here and just, you know, segment out parts of this. Make sure you use the direct selection tool here. Delete that away, cool. I don't think we'll really add a little drop to the highlight there, it's so small. But to this highlight here, we'll break away a little piece of that. 
can see that. Just delete a couple times. There we go. And if you want, you can always grab the piece of path and just like nudge it down a little bit using the selection tool. You can do the same thing here. Just nudge it down a little to give a little bit of space if you want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to speed the video up here while I, I continue talking about this. And I will be going through and just cleaning up and creating highlights as I see fit for this, uh, for this whole effect here. All right, there we go. I think something like that will work for us. Of course, you can create, you know, and keep tweaking your highlights as you see fit. But because all the other layers are locked up, we can just grab all of these highlights just like that and go object group to group them up. It's going to clean up our layers panel a little bit. We can even name these, you know, highlights if I can spell correctly here. Oh, hello. Yep, I'm bad, bad with the spelling today. Look at that. It's as, if, it's as if it will not let me spell highlights. There we go, highlights. And with this whole group selected, we'll go to our transparency panel here, and we're going to set the blend mode to something like overlay and just check to see how that looks. I really like how the, the colors are interacting up here on the top of the gradient. Down at the bottom, it's a little bit too strong, like the, the strength of the highlight. So what we can do is use our direct selection tool, the white arrow tool right up here, and just drag a selection over those paths. Well, let's be a little bit more precise here. Drag a selection just over those paths, and we can reduce the opacity of them individually. So we could knock these down to like 50% or something like that and just deselect. And you can see they blend, eh, maybe 50% is too much. Let's knock them down to like 80%, something like that, just to take some of the sting off of them. Kind of something like that. I think that works. Now, one last thing that I want to do before we wrap this up and send it on its way, I'm going to unlock the gradient text front and unlock the blend. In fact, let's hit this little arrow and open the blend up. We can select either piece of artwork in the blend and change it to change the blend a little bit. So I'm going to select the, the lower uh, artwork here on the blend, the, the bit of the blend that's further away from the text, if you will. And I'm going to change the color of that type using the color panel. And this is actually interesting. See how it's telling me the color is FFFFFFF, which is solid white. Well, the reason it's doing that is because right here over in the bottom of the toolbar, you can see I have the stroke pulled and selected. The fill is not selected. So if I change the color up here in the color panel, it's going to change the color of the stroke, which there is none. So it's going to apply a stroke to this, which is going to be kind of messy. So let's just actually click on the fill to select the fill. Now we're going to affect the fill color. And I'm going to change the hexadecimal code to 61FCFF. I'm going to hit the tab key to commit the change. It's going to give me a really bright cyan color. And you can see how it automatically updates and creates this cool, just like fading away, icy looking effect here for our text. I'm going to collapse that blend. It's what I want. I'm going to select the whole bit now, everything, all three of these groups. And I'm going to group that up. I'm going to go object group. And now because this is grouped, I can zoom out and I can just align this to my artboard and just make sure it's all lined up properly. So here from this little drop down menu with my, with my selection tool selected here. We have this little drop down menu. We can choose to align to artboard. And then I'm just going to align the horizontal and vertical centers. And that's it. At this point, obviously, you could export this as your .ai or .eps file. You could export a PNG right here from Adobe Illustrator. Or you could take it over to Photoshop and continue playing with it and tweaking it and doing whatever you darn well please with it. So that is how you create this cool sort of simple bubble-looking 3D text. I thought it was pretty cool. It kind of looks like popsicle text or something. I don't know. Uh, but the point is, we created this in Adobe Illustrator. And for creating this text effect in Adobe Illustrator and playing with great gradients and shapes and highlights and opacities and blend modes and all kinds of different shape tools to edit and tweak text and a bunch of other things. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.